Super. <laughs> Thanks, Vince. Any late items to introduce? <laughs> Wonderful. And we'll move along to adoption of the minutes. If anybody could remember what they said. <laughs> How long ago was that? That was uh, December 2019, almost a year and two months ago. I know, it's incredible, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, yeah, so I guess regardless of any further dialogue, we'll move to adopt the minutes. I, I do recall looking at them about 10 months ago, and I think everything was pretty, pretty intact there. So yeah. thanks, Betty, for moving that. Vince, did I see a hand there? Okay. Wonderful. And then we shall adopt the minutes. Steph or Emma, were there any public comments we needed to attend to? Wonderful. Okay, then a new business. Emma, I understand you have a presentation we can all enjoy here. I hope Wonderful. so. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to share screen. Mm -hmm. Can everyone um, see the appropriate screen? Mm -hmm. Yep, looks great. In your notes, Emma. It's in the note. Yeah, that's what it looks like on mine. That's kind of weird. Is it still showing my notes? No, it's perfect now. Good. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm bringing forward a development permit application. The number is 2021-18. It's for 1037 Miller Road, um, the future site of the proposed health center. As you can see in the location map here, it's within the village revitalization development permit area off of Miller Road. And... It's the current site of our commuter parking lot, as uh, many of you might know. And it is, let's see if I can get the, yeah, there's a site plan. So it is um, just south of the proposed fire hall and just east of, or west of the Birch project for the Stunt Cove community rental housing. This is a street view screenshot of Miller Road, uh, roughly in the location of where the proposed site would be. And here is a, a larger shot of the site plan and the application is for a two and a half story building as shown here in the orange. And we have an architectural rendering on the right. This building, um, also has an extensive landscaping plan with native species, um, examples shown here in the pictures. The building also has a partial green roof and that would be on the entrance side facing Miller Road. There's also a proposal to include a bike rack and two benches for seating and the design of those items are as shown. And the various walkways will have a uh, paver surface treatment. Um, example photos were provided by the applicant. For the pedestrian walkways, it will be mostly this um, gray type paver. And then for the vehicular, we didn't get a specific photo for the um, parking areas, but they will be permeable pavers for the, the parking areas. And then this um, section that goes towards the entrance here will be a, uh, they call them CIP pavers. But that's mm -hmm. a photo for an example. Uh, color scheme and finishes were also provided. Um, for the most part, this building um, 
will have a cedar colored horizontal siding as well as a vertical darker brown siding, metal, metal siding. Um, so the example here, 3B, is an example of the darker brown vertical metal siding. And 3A is an example of the cedar colored horizontal metal siding. Um, as you can see in the schematics, uh, roughly half and half of the siding will be the dark brown and the cedar color. Uh, there's also a number of exposed timber features on the design. Um, it would be a Douglas fir wood grain feature. And that's, uh, as you can see, like the roof trim and the posts mm -hmm. uh, and the doors will have a similar wood grain finish. The roof is a metal roofing in a lighter zinc color called old zinc gray. And some of the windows will also feature cement, uh, not cement, fiber cement panels in a smooth painted finish. And it's in a blue gray finish. So shown in number seven here. The window frames are going to be in a slightly darker gray. And those are the finishes shown on all the elevations around the building. And I've just summarized some of the relevant development permit guidelines for this building and the parking on this site plan. Um, I don't have one on me. Uh, hopefully everyone has a copy of the report that does show the site plan, they can follow along. But the parking is meant to be clustered in smaller groups um, off street. And the story, the height, building height, two to two and a half stories for this area. Uh, emphasis on use of natural tones and maintaining, maintaining an arts and crafts aesthetic. Also in the massing of the building, we're looking for something that gives the impression of smaller blocks as opposed to one large monolithic structure. Uh, any signage should be hand painted, carved or three dimensional and landscaping should incorporate native vegetation and as far as the pedestrian circulation, it should be prioritized and um, designed in a way that networks with the surrounding areas. I also wanted to bring up the active design guidelines. These were just adopted by council last year, or actually, I guess, 2019, end of 2019, which would have been two years ago now. Um, and there is a specific section that applies to public developments like this health center. And just a little background on the active design guidelines. They actually came out of the transportation plan to encourage more active transportation on the island. Active design in itself is a recognized design practice that focuses on design elements that facilitate and encourage active living. And active living is the practice of incorporating regular physical activity into daily life. And that has been recognized to have a significant contribution to physical, mental, and social well being. The guidelines were crafted to be specific to Bowen Island and uh, the island context. So I've pulled out the relevant guidelines for this type of development. And the first one is to include cycling amenities, such as sheltered bike parking. And as you'll recall, there was the one bike rack, but it was not covered. Um, so that could be um, something, a consideration to have that bike parking relocated in a more sheltered area. A uh, path to door is the idea of having your pedestrian and cycling circulation um, more direct from the existing network to the entrance of the development. So I should have pulled up the site plan so it was more handy to, to show everyone, but the- Sorry, the, Emma, I'm just gonna, sorry. Um, can you guys mute yourselves until it's time to chitty chat? I think there's some sound noise. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, uh, yeah, let me know if there's any problems hearing me or if there's um, too much noise or anything like that. 
Um, but talking about path to door, the existing site plan right now does show a pedestrian walkway off of the um, existing trail along Miller Road going directly to the entrance of the building. However, um, if you are going from the south of Miller heading up, most people would be inclined to cut through that parking lot and there does not look like there are any safe uh, accommodations for pedestrian access through that parking lot, meaning they would have to take the more circuitous route uh, up Miller and back over to the entrance. So that's one consideration. Incorporating attractive stairs. So there are a number of stairways in this development. Um, we're looking for things with uh, natural features in the landscaping, making it more welcoming, user-friendly railings and uh, wider landings, uh, more accessible design. So um, I, I don't have any specific comments, but something for, for the panel to, to consider as well. Accessible entrances, making sure they are um, wide enough, have enough room for all mobility uh, abilities and minimizing the number of stairs and the doorways themselves also need to be wide enough for accessibility. Public amenities such as gathering places, um, seating and features such as water fountains, um, things like that that allow for the public to enjoy the space. Uh, landscaping with natural features is highly encouraged for the Bowen context. And this is actually an example photo from Village Square. Um, so something similar to that should be considered for, for a development like the health center. And lastly, another type of gathering space that is appropriate for Bowen would be community gardens. And this was also brought up during the staff review that uh, with all the landscaping in this development, one of the uh, more appropriate ideas would be to have a medicinal garden or an edible garden um, that showcases uh, local plants and First Nations uh, medicinal plantings. So that's, that's pretty much the, the presentation and staff is seeking comment from the design panel regarding this development and how it could better meet the design guidelines. That's it. Thanks, Emma. As a first blush comment, um, there's really very little here that worries me about saying yes to everything. It's it's really nice to see such a well flushed out landscape plan and architecture that obviously has taken into account the guidelines and the intent of the guidelines, both historically and the new guidelines that have been drafted. So I, I, I'm really, really pleased with the look of it. I haven't had a chance to really go into the interior plan and have a, a good look at that, but that's not really what we're all about as a design panel. I understand that that you know, it's largely been thought through already. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be moving to this level. So uh, that's my first comment would be, it looks great. I have one question though, and that's regarding the elevations. It looked like there was um, a material that was sort of a dark blue gray infill glass panel in some of the windows. Yes. Any chance there's more elaboration on what that's all about as opposed to just being a, a window? Um, so actually that was in the color scheme that I had shown, um, the more blue gray color. Um, it's meant to be a fiber cement accent panel. And I, I mean, I only have the color that he sent. I, I'm not sure what it looks like in person. And with COVID, I don't actually have any physical sample to provide. Um, but I can put this back up really quick quick to jog your memory. It's just one question I have. I, I'm not too sure what, what it's about. It seems almost a bit foreign to the, the overall scheme. Do you see it here? Yeah. Yeah, it's this this gray color here. And there was also be... above the, the front door, was it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's all around the building yeah. <laughs> on every side. <laughs> It, it could just be the rendering has color implications, which are often not totally sympathetic to what the intent is. But it, it seems it seems 
like some the only thing I, I really feel any question about. I could ask for a little more clarification, like the intent and like how that came about. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, particularly over the front entry, it, it, my guess is there's a low ceiling there that's only just above the door, and therefore glass wouldn't be appropriate. That's the only reason I could think of why wouldn't you let more light in there. That's all. They also have quite significant, like on this side facing birch, mm -hmm. they show quite a few of these panels. It could I, be I on that. It could be on that side. There's a fire um, exposure issue, mm -hmm. given how close they are to birch. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that would answer the question that as to why it's not simply glass. It's just a query. Yeah. Or is it meant to be a spandrel panel, you know, like like a yeah. like a back painted or fritted uh, glass? Um, with an insulated back pan or something like that, it it doesn't it doesn't say uh, uh, what what this what this material is. Um, well, I I mean it was in one of the materials list as yeah fiber cement panel. Yeah, I don't have any more specifics, but I, well, I will ask the applicant. Yeah, I'm just curious because you know usually more light is better. It's not this brightest location on the island. Mm -hmm. I know at the front entry, there's quite a bit of Eve mm -hmm. and not, and it's a green roof above it. So there, you know, the ability to get light into that front entry area would be something one would be seeking, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma, yeah. is the intent of this to give feedback and we're seeing it again, or is this just uh, commentary based on it moving forward to the next step? Uh, well, normally it's only the the one design panel meeting if everything mm -hmm. is satisfactory. Right. Then this will be a design development permit that will be issued. Um, if there's any conditions on this design um, that the panel would like to see on the permit, we can impose conditions on the permit. Uh, right now, there aren't any. Understood. I, I do have one question in regards to the, uh, the massing. Um, in, in, a, in a couple of the views, it does look uh, that the, the main body of the building is not how how broken up uh, of a massing are, are we uh, looking for by these design guidelines? Like because the the main body is still one congruent piece. Does this does this meet that with the with the with the smaller appendages on it, or was it intended to have uh, some of that mass broken up a little bit more? I think that's a good question for discussion with the panel. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, what other people feel, feel about it? Well, it, often there's a proponent here, um, other than just Emma, but yeah. I guess this because this is a municipal project. Um, we don't have a developer and therefore we don't have uh, A, the architect and, and B, the yeah. Well, we do the have a, speaking to it. Sorry, Mike, we do have an architect and landscaper for this project. Um, they weren't able to make this particular meeting. Um, if there were significant questions and um, you really, it's more so time is of the essence. So they, they were hoping to go forward, but if it, you, you find it necessary, them, um, right. Emma, you are cutting in and out your voice. Yeah, I was just saying we could reschedule for another meeting if it was absolutely necessary to talk <laughs> to the architect and landscaper, but they would prefer to move forward if possible. Oh, oh yeah, no, Certainly. that wasn't, that wasn't my, uh, my, my question. I was just asking the other design panel members how, how mm -hmm. they feel about the massing uh, of it. Go ahead, Christina. I have a, I have a related comment that, that 
sort of relates to the massing. And I was focused more on the dormers because to oh. me, the dormers on the front seem very heavy mm -hmm. uh, and, and sort of adds to that large massing. And I wondered if um, the dormers, I was curious because the dormers don't speak, seem to speak the same language as the craftsman style mm -hmm. that it advocated for in the design guidelines. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if there's any way in which, you know, if those dormers were we're in a more craftsman style with eaves and a peak and so on, if that might break down the massing or, um, you, you know, strengthen the craftsman style of the overall aesthetic. Because to me, it seems just a little bit unusual that the dormers mm -hmm. are so modern and the rest of the building is, is fairly arts and crafts in its yeah. style. And so I, and I think that relates to the, the massing, Vincent, that you're mm -hmm. pointing out to, it sort of makes it quite heavy. Yeah, and I don't think you're concerned about a head height up there as it's just a, a light well. Uh, although, I don't know if there's some sort of hint on natural ventilation going up through there, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and but, further to that, if, if those are dormers, I'll call them that, uh, with vertical walls on each side, which looks like is the case, that won't let the light into the space below as well mm -hmm. as it would if they were angled, mm -hmm. permitting that light to percolate down at a, at a wider spread, mm -hmm. a wider cone, if you will. So mm -hmm. what Christina is saying certainly would move in the direction of letting more light into that space, theoretically, than right. the vertical well, mm -hmm. my suspicion is that it's a design intent to give contemporary flavor to rather traditional guidelines, uh, a poke at the envelope, if you will, of working within the structure of those guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm picturing, Christina, what you've said, and it certainly, in my mind, would be a game changer for meeting the intent of what the overall aesthetic I think is mm -hmm. expected to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, it's such a prominent element, right? You've got this big expensive roof and then you got big gigantic dormers. Mm. Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah, just a couple of conf, uh, comments. I find myself quite conflicted about this building design. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, I personally don't see it, doesn't remind me of anything in the arts and crafts uh, tradition, nor and, and not even really bowing to it. Uh, if anything, it looks like a building that could be in Burnaby or Surrey. It doesn't look distinctively Bowen to me. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, we all know how essential it is as a building and it's a pretty it's pretty hard to naysay it given well obviously the cost constraints that it has and, and the exceptional importance to the community as a whole as a building mm -hmm. but as a design i find it uh it doesn't speak to me of of anything distinctively bowen at all it could be from you know from anywhere in the metropolitan area really uh, I the the use of horizontal windows for example and horizontal motifs in the uh, wide horizontal motifs is this is sort of not not arts and crafts to me in any way um, you and and there are innumerable variants you can do on arts and crafts obviously that, are, that bring it up to date we certainly have some examples here on the island but um, yeah, I, it, it's pretty hard to say no in the face of like, without a lot of resources and having to go back to the drawing board, uh, given the importance of the building. Mm -hmm. But that's my conflicted take on it. Jeremy, something um, that's prompted in my mind with what you've just said is, assuming they haven't embarked on any structural design yet, they're in a position for some things that could have quite an impact to be changed with relative ease, uh, largely just uh, drafting components of time, like those dormers, for instance. You know, that's uh, maybe an hour of 3D modeling and potentially a little bit of drafting and 
you've, you've got a different look with those. Uh, the exterior siding um, or the approach to way the exterior is dealt with obviously has no impact on structural design and can be played with in a way that doesn't hold up their time frame. So if they were to come back to us with some of these suggestions being added, uh, I, I don't see them potentially impacting the, um, the time frame. No, and the, one of the other things too, I mean, which would affect the interior layout is, is the windows. I have almost a pathological aversion to long horizontal windows, particularly in a structure that is so massively horizontal. Um, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no contrasting balance, sense of balance to me in the aesthetic of that. It's, um, it, it, to me, it just cries out for something to contrast its massive horizontal character, something that's vertical and particularly, I suppose, the, the practicality of the, of, of, Vertical windows. I mean, we're, we're animals that are that stand on two feet. We don't, um, you know, we're not crawling around on four. Um, so, I mean, that's well, that's a pet peeve, I guess you'd say. But I do think there's something to be said for the aesthetic uh, and the balance of the aesthetic of the vertical versus the horizontal mass of the building mm -hmm. as a contrast mm -hmm. and aesthetic. Yeah. And that yeah, and re regarding those windows, like it, it does. Uh, uh, I, I think right in the design guidelines, they show like uh, um, uh, trim boards and and sill boards and uh, et cetera. And this doesn't have any of that with a contrasting color, et cetera. If I'm recalling that 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 uh, that booklet very well uh, that we subscribe to. Let me see if I can find that. Emma, the current guidelines have a ranking, correct? The boxes are filled out and you achieve a certain standing with respect to how you've met the intent of the guidelines. Did they did they go through that procedure? Talking about the active design guidelines or the snug cove design guidelines? Sorry, couldn't hear you. Um, are you asking about the snug cove design guidelines? Yeah, that's right. I'm not aware of a, a form or a point. If they went through that procedure? I'm, I'm not aware of a point system. I thought in our last round of reviewing the new guidelines before they were ratified was a careful review of this ranking system where they would attach a value to whether or not they met certain criteria. And at the end, there was a final number saying, you know, if they were above X, then they've met that criteria. And if not, then they had to review it further. Did we not do that? Was that a dream I had? <laughs> we no, did. I'm thinking yeah. a checklist. Yeah. We did have, there, there was that. I was always a bit suspicious that you could uh, reduce it to a matter of ticked boxes in the same sense that you can't reduce a, a, a symphony to the, the individual pieces is how they mesh. And there is something <laughs> in, the, in the general present visual sense of uh, how things work together that, that is ultimately the, mo well, that's what aesthetic is, a sensitivity to connecting patterns. Yeah. Um, I've, I've just pulled up the guidelines. There aren't, there isn't any checklist on the guidelines. Um, is this something that is being proposed? Uh, it's something I recall reviewing in our, in fact, I think our last meeting was about those guidelines. Okay, and there, there are the proposed guidelines, they, they haven't been adopted yet though. Oh, okay, so they were only attached for reference. <laughs> I'm not involved with that project update. Oh. That was a Jennifer thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, no. so we're still working strictly with the traditional tried and true. This is the way it's done. Yeah, we're uh, still working working with the old, uh, the old the photocopied. Photocopy. Yeah, black understood. And white. Okay, then oh. I have to just put my other brain in. <laughs> oh, yeah, although I'm sure you can. Time ago. Yeah. Still use the the new stuff that you're thinking about. Um, it's yeah. just I don't have a copy. 
Gotcha. Okay. So what, what happens in my mind is that the traditional, like Jeremy was saying, the traditional guidelines aren't really the same as where we're headed with the new ones because the new ones have a different criteria for how to evaluate. And mm -hmm. what we're doing in this discussion is evaluating based on the previous, which was much more specific to arts and crafts as opposed to the ranking approach. Exactly. And Jeremy's comments become a lot more valid with that in mind, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You want me to share a screen? Hence, hence the, the, yeah. Sorry, what was that step? Do you want me to share a screen of the notes from that meeting? Sure. Can you see them here? Yeah. So guidelines need more exposure package at the front desk, an appendix. So, so Steph, essentially what's happened is that the, the new guidelines have not yet been ratified. They've, they've sort of stalled because I know there was a lot, I mean, that was a year ago. There was a lot of impetus behind getting this, this in yeah. place. And it- I'm not sure what happened. Was it COVID or something, Emma? Not sure either. Jennifer is gone for this month. So I Ask her. Yeah. And we're talking about the principles of arts and crafts versus the style. Yeah, yeah. And one. Yeah, because we were going to meet on the 16th of March last year and it got canceled because of the start of COVID. Right. And we were going to meet and continue discussing that. Thanks for that, Vince. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and, and you know, specific to what Jeremy was just saying, there's certainly more room for, um, in my opinion, debating some of the aesthetics that adhere more to the previous guidelines, certainly. I'm not sure how to um, really word that other than if it's simple to say that the guidelines we're soon to be adopting are simply not in place yet, and that is a document still to be uh, reviewed and implemented, then we're working with the old guidelines and which is more specific to arts and crafts components as opposed to intent. I think even with, with the, the whole idea of intent, you can still be, uh, because the the principles between behind arts and crafts, well, I mean, we might be getting a bit of a diversion here. To, uh, yeah. But just briefly, the the the, the principles of arts and crafts are not. Um, there is a certain set of rules that were perceptual aesthetic rules that in modernism were just thrown out the window. It's sort of you could do any whatever you liked. Um, and hence you get some of the things that we have and don't care about these days. Um, anyway, that's a bit of a diversion. Well, but, but an important one. Um, and and mm -hmm. I'd love to see us find a way to vault forward so that the proponent can keep moving forward um, at the same time as looking at some augmentation, some adjustment to the exterior to better fit the guidelines like the dormers like the horizontality of the exterior um, the windows possibly the cement window cement product material mm -hmm. I, I don't get a, I don't really have a feel for what that's going to look like but it certainly doesn't feel like it's working with the overall aesthetic um, and, and maybe I'm just getting caught on the color the color seems quite foreign to the the whole exterior but if there's a way of getting us um, to create some wording that maybe allows this application to keep moving with some adjustments and, and pointing them in the direction of uh, going through the guidelines again, maybe there's something we can do in that regard that keeps it moving. Because I, I know that we'd all love to see this project keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just come to staff's attention, um, this project um, 
will probably require a bit more time to figure out the servicing, particularly the sewage connection. I can't hear you. Emma, you faded. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Just be loud and we'll probably uh, hear you. My laptop has a really bad mic. <laughs> Try and get it fixed. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I was just saying um, it's come to staff's attention. This application will likely take more time, um, not so much for the design aspect, but there are some issues with the sewage connection. Mm -hmm. So I think that if there were any specific design changes you would like to see or consider or um, have the applicants come back with, we could definitely do another meeting if everyone is, is amenable to a second meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so far, I have on my list of things to talk with the applicant about are those cement panels, the dormers being quite modern, um, possibly considering a gabled dormer, um, and to uh, reconsider the, the, the significant use of horizontal windows <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and um, the, I guess the general horizontality, if that's a word, um, in, in the um, That's a word now. design. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Vincent had mentioned something about the trim color. The old Snack Cove design guidelines only mentions that the trim should be continuous with the surrounding context. And if there were to be bright colors to limit it to the trim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know uh, if we want anything well, specific there. The, 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 the windows do look quite modern for the aesthetic that I think this uh, the the design uh, guidelines are going after, right? So uh, you know, we're like uh, I'm looking at that that list that they came up with uh, that that we never ended up uh, uh, instituting, and the art it, it's it's a priority was the artistic and handcrafted, uh, you know, trim and materials kind of look that uh, was tr uh, that. People were generally trying to uh, extract from that arts and crafts style. Well, and, and to further that a little bit, Vince, the the uh, metal siding, it's probably longboard that they've been looking at. And it's a product that um, at a distance looks like wood, but when you're up close to it, it's obviously not. And it's not necessarily that much less expensive, if at all less expensive once installed than wood. I do get that it's lower maintenance. Over time, in theory, it'll look exactly the same. But part of the beauty of arts and crafts and eventual heritage stuff is that it does show time mm -hmm. and gets extra coats of paint down the road. Mm -hmm. The parts that are not um, natural tend to stay looking exactly the same. So you get varied depreciation of exteriors that can look quite odd over time. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's if it's being budget driven, the longboard, or whether it's just some design intent that someone, you know, is suggesting would be a good way to deal with the siding. Mm -hmm. But that's something else that might get looked at is the, the various metal siding types and how they work together. And maybe there's a wood alternative that if the eaves are large enough, the maintenance should be relatively low. It's not a tall building. It's not gonna take a lot of driving rain from the sides unless it were mm -hmm. taller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly the overhangs would provide lots of protection. I would think. Jeremy. One of the things that, that kind of kind of bugs me about it is are the color schemes. I understand uh, having colors and trims and stuff and not having anything that's too loud, but it, it, it just seems ironic in a, in a climate that is for so much of the year in the winter, dull and rainy and dark, that we have colors that are like uh, army field green and if you remember an earlier iteration of the of the pub they actually had sort of a blue siding that really distinguished the, the multiple faceted look of the building and and then they ended up painting it you know a kind of military 
not camouflage, but you know, a very, very dull color. And it always, when, when the Boulevard Cottage was moved and it was painted that blue color, that's the, the cottage that's beside, that has the, beside the gallery that has the um, caring circle in it. Pe people just went sideways because of the color. And then they ended up thinking it took a while, but then it settled in and then everybody really loved it. But at first it was such a, there's such a hate on for that building. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Just for mm -hmm. painting. Anyway, the, I, the point being is that I don't see why you can't enliven a building with some color in the trims either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, perhaps as a general comment, we're feeling that there's not quite been enough attention to the various aspects of meeting the, the craftsman look. And it mm -hmm. has to do with everything we've been talking about in some detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would like to also um, underline what you said about color. I think particularly when we're talking about healthcare, that um, I think there's a direct correlation between certain color fields and um, a sense of well-being that really isn't carried in that building at all right now. That's a good point. Great point, Betty. That's yeah. really good. If you look at the newer Victoria Hospital, the colors that they picked for that were all blues, meditative colors. They weren't the usual hospital green, uh, which you, was just depressing from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, so some thought to those kinds of things. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Betty. I do. I also think, I mean, I'm, I'm just listening to what everybody's saying about the design. And I happen to live in an old house that has mid-century bones. And I'm realizing I'm seeing a lot of the same elements in, in this design. I think it is shifting into that modern rather than the arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fair to ask them to go back and look at that. Mm -hmm. Given where it is, that it's in that historical area. Mm -hmm. In my mind, what we're asking them to do doesn't affect the plan, no, the no, layout, no, no. Or, or, the, or the structure. So, you know, their, their ability to keep moving forward with consultants and, uh, and, and certainly exterior planning, um, grading, et cetera. I don't see that being a problem, especially given what you said, Emma, about the uh, other issues that they're contending with. Mm -hmm. Emma, do you think that it, there'd be value in sharing the um, a presentation from Jennifer from the last meeting the ADP had? Oh, with the applicant? Yeah. Um, sure. I haven't That's seen. Good. I haven't seen that meeting it's myself. Justin. Okay, I'll share it with you. Yeah, I'm sure the applicant would love to see it. So it, it does sound like to me that everyone would like to reconvene. Um, after the applicant has had some time to all the comments. So bad. Emma, could you write that down? Here, can I, can I share my screen? We can get a little, little voting going on. Yeah, yeah, so everyone's good to meet again after the applicant has had time to review all the comments and incorporate yeah. some revisions. Sounds yeah, fabulous. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Yep. So I can, I can do some grammatical. Uh, two weeks after, but um, do these capture your comments? Why were we supposed to read that? Oh, do you want yeah. me to make it larger? Or does someone want to read it out loud? No, I made it bigger on my phone. I'm big. I'm okay. <laughs> <sighs> uh, you know what? I think you've worded it perfectly. The color piece, I've just got about healing mm -hmm. color about, yeah. My, I, my comment on you about the maintenance relative to the type of siding, whether it's metal and some, you know, concrete board. Um, this is not a, a money-making place. So I wondered about the concern about the maintenance in the future. I'm fine with everything else that's been in there i just make a comment towards maintenance once you put this up to have to put money into maintaining it more so because it's wood i wonder if that's where they're coming from but i mean you how much maintenance goes into the old well the library 
I mean, that's that's completely wood siding with very, very small, small eaves. Yeah. yeah. How often does it get repainted? And it's been there wow. for how long? And yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good point. I, I just I don't see yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. argument. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Well, particularly if you if you confine it to, say, the trims, the window trims, and so on, uh, it's relative in terms of. Uh, surface area that needs to be painted relatively small. They're vertical surfaces. They're, they're less uh, weather prone, unless of course they get direct sunlight, but. So you're saying maybe at least that the trim be wood? Or whatever. I mean, if you're, if you're considering elements to be wood. Uh, yeah, so. Or I'll say, or that there are wood elements that. It just seems like there's too much manufactured exterior yeah. in the proposal right now. And so, it, you know, it could be up to the applicant to take that to their thinking of what it is that maybe they could justify adjusting to make more natural. And the suggestions are siding, window trim, um, I guess those are the two two elements really, and 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 the glass versus uh, cement polymer material. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, where is it? Where is that? Uh, new one, or is that already in there? I guess it is a new one. Oh no, sorry. It's consider using real word wood or wood alternative to be used okay. instead of longboard. Um, I, I was just going to say, I think you can actually get away with uh, synthetic siding if if it has contrasts of light and shadow. Um, you know, if, mm -hmm. be it a board and batten effect or narrow beveled siding as opposed to the big wide things which are more typical of the 50s, um, then you get it's you, you get the maintenance advantage, but you also have the traditional uh, visual depth of light contrasts and textured surface. Like a hardy panel. Yeah, I mean, there are, I've certainly seen, I've even seen it done in concrete actually in the States where they made almost yeah. a, a narrow beveled siding effect in, in concrete. Uh, yeah, Hardy Panel makes both a shingle. Um, they've even made one now that looks like a semi-transparent shingle that from 20 feet away that really truly looks like a semi-transparent stained wood. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, even anything that like that, that that has that aspect of, I guess it's only one aspect of traditional craftsmanship, but the way, the way that it surfaces were looked at they they need they wanted to be textured and differentiated that was mm -hmm. a big driving thing in traditional design anyway mm -hmm. well and something maybe one of the elements in this decision making that they've been dealing with is the uh, the whole uh fire smart so you know the exterior materials not being wood obviously better for avoiding fire spread but both hardy panel, longboard, um, metal siding, you know, it's, I think what we're looking at is the combination of those don't seem like they've quite met the mark yet. Yeah. But they could, because there are products like that that can fit. Yeah. Um, and uh, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to ask if there were any comments regarding the landscaping or the pedestrian uh, network. Last yeah, I couldn't hear you, but I was going to bring up the landscaping, and I I did read the the staff comment about some kind of medicinal garden or or something like that, and um, I I'm concerned that there doesn't seem to be a lot of resources for maintaining gardens. We're struggling with that at the library and the the Cove Commons and. Um, out at the golf course, there's a number of places and usually what happens is it comes back to the local garden club, can you do this? And, and in the end, um, the capacity's not there. 
So I think that um, somehow the landscape plan needs to have something that's quite low maintenance and comprehensive, and then maybe some special projects if they can find a group who's willing to take it on to do some of those nice, but maybe not essential landscape ideas. So I don't want to squash it all together, but I want to kind of point out that we don't really have a municipal landscape crew that either has the skills or knowledge to do that sort of thing. I also had a question, Emma, you were talking about some uh, awkwardness or peculiarity about the entrance where it was dangerous for pedestrians crossing. Uh, on the back. Yeah, it was, uh, I wasn't quite clear on that, but it, whatever, whatever it is, it didn't sound good. It <laughs> should be mitigated. Share screen really quick on that. Does everyone see this? Yes. So the um, hatched area is the pedestrian walkway. So this is the existing trail on Miller, the gravel trail, and there is a connection to the, the front entrance here, as you can see. Um, but if you were walking up Miller and you were coming through here, you just wanted to cut straight across, there's no safe crossing through the uh, access road. This is the pedestrian access to the Crippen Park trails along the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you, you would envision that there would be pedestrians that may need to cross this access at some point, mm -hmm. but this is uh, the access road and all parking. There's really no, there's no dedicated crossing for a pedestrian and there's definitely nothing that looks welcoming or landscape or designed for a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that's what? a real problem because people will always take the shortest route. <laughs> yeah. And, and so many buildings never, never build access accordingly. And then people make paths across. Um, like this, this entrance right here is for the ambulance, really. So, and then it's all parking and then landscaping. So if, if someone wanted to cross here to get to the, you know, it just doesn't seem accommodating. For the pedestrian. No, yeah, I, I'd uh, agree. Yeah. Is there is there possibly a compromise that comes from the sidewalk uh, at a forty five directly past the signage and at a diagonal towards the front entry? Like a pathway could be potentially put through there. What does that say? Existing rock outcropping and mm. mature vegetation right through there. Do you want to make it a little bit bigger? What's a retaining wall? Yeah, so right down in the bottom left where it says existing 18 inch diameter cedar, if one were to exit the sidewalk and go at a 45 degree towards the front entry, you're, you're, it looks like you're going through existing rock outcropping and native vegetation, but is there potential to put a path through there rather than walking all the way? Because people will cut through there, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. mm. unless, it's, unless it's dangerous and then they probably won't. Well, the current landscaping will have, I think, um, yeah, it won't be a very level surface with plantings and stuff, so it won't be very- Unless, it, unless it's designed to include a path there. It's not right now. <laughs> right. Topography doesn't look like it varies very much. Well, maybe that could be a stipulation as well, um, uh, Steph. That a path be created? You consider a, a way in which a path could be uh, a more natural line of movement to the entryway. Yeah. Devised. More natural lines, sorry. Yeah. 
I always think of those lawns in front of the old courthouse when that was grass. And there were all these paths that went across the grass that people had made because they were more direct. Yeah. And the existing ones just didn't provide that a formal route. In other words, there will be a path there. <laughs> it's whether or not it gets designed yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. West. Seems logical to put a note in there to see if there's a uh, more direct route from uh, a, a northern northern walking direction to the front door, as opposed to going all the way up to almost a ninety degree and beyond pedestrian access into the front door. I think this, this sewage thing is really working in your favor. It's looking that way. <laughs> Meeting would have been over 30 minutes ago. <laughs> and the types of planting seem okay? Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have the, the list in front of me, but there are only one or two there that I thought mm, maybe, but yeah, in general, they pick natives. Um, I actually have a, a site visit to rush to. Um, okay. There are just... any other? Yeah, I, I was going to say, feel free to email me if you think of anything else to add. So Emma, you're going to get back to us uh, about another date and some feedback on the fact that they've gotten these comments. Yes. Um, I'll yeah, I'll work with Steph to to figure out a timeline for that. Wonderful. Great. Looks like we're moving to adjourn the meeting then. Oh, can we let Emma go and then just vote on this? Sure. Sure. I need commitment. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> yeah. Need you to stop sharing as well. So generous. Thanks, Emma. Okay, I'll just give you guys another glance at this. I'm all about voting, as you know. Keep us on our toes, Steph. Yeah, I need to. I don't know anybody saying that's not what I can. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Did, did we say we want that glass window above the front entry to be fiber cement? Did, is that what was said? It'll be preferable no, glass. Yeah. Oh, preferable okay. too, yeah. Oh, so I'll say install, oh. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm shy because I don't know architectural words. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. The intent is there. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I was wondering if it is. Is it possible to add a sentence that that just in one sentence sort of says it feels like it's not adequately addressing the arts and crafts rather than modern kind of aesthetic and to look at it. Yeah, the, good point, buddy. Things we talked about. Yeah. It says here that in general, a more thorough inclusion of arts and crafts principles be applied. Oh, maybe could that go up at the top to, sure. there, to do this chronological? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. It's just okay. gonna help them yeah. know what we're thinking. Yeah. 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 Right at the start. Yeah. And do you want to freeze it? Um, to That's finish? fine, I think. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Maybe I can do like a poll and say including. Including? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they can kind of figure it out themselves. That's where we're trying to get to. Right. And yep. then I'll share with Emma the work that was done last year. I just I just perused that presentation. It looks like the next phase for Jennifer Pierce was public engagement, which would be why that was stalled. Yeah. I, I remember she did all that. that too. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. And she came back to us after that, I think. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think so. She was going to do two public engagements one with a smaller group and one with a larger group. I so did I the larger group, I think. It was at the really? library or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I went there too, Betty. 
Well, maybe there's a newer document that just hasn't gone to council yet. I'll see if I can get my hands on something. Yeah. Oh, well, that worked and it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were, I thought we were dealing with it, not the old one. <laughs> yeah. I will call her after this. She's on. She's she's off this week, but I have her number. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, vote. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? All in favor. All right. Thank you so Inanimous. much. <laughs> and then is David just pulling into his driveway right now? No, no, I'm I'm somewhere else. I'm just stepping out to a meeting. So um, we voted. We, we're done. That's good. I think we uh, we vote to conclude. Yes. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? <laughs> All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Steph. Take care. Oh, Bye. Nice to see everyone. Nice to see Bye, everyone. everyone. It yeah, is. Exactly. It is very nice. nice. It almost feels normal, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Far from. Yeah. Far from. Okay, it's almost the night time. It's almost dark, Mike. <laughs>